Recall the last time you tried to open a door. You likely use the outer edge where the door handle is located. Well, today I try to open the door by pushing the inner edge and no surprise that I had to put a lot of effort or force to open the door. And as I moved away from the inner to the outer edge, the effort required reduced. So, you see the placement of the knob well away from the door's hinge or the axis of rotation makes a lot of sense. So, as I moved away from this point to this, the twisting force I was providing to the door was increasing, making it easier to open it. And in the language of physics, we say the torque on the door was increasing. So, if we get a little more technical about this, torque is equal to the product of the applied force and its perpendicular distance from the axis of rotation. Well, this is true, but not the whole story. So, let us dive deeper into this topic and say this is your door or rather the top view of the door and this is the axis of rotation around which the door is rotating. This is the applied force and this arrow you see is nothing but the position vector r of the point at which you are applying the force. Then we say that the torque acting on the door about this point is the product of R and F. So, it is important to remember that torque is always calculated about a point and it is therefore necessary to mention what point we are talking about. Like here, we specifically said that the torque is a product of R and F about this point. Also, here we have taken the magnitude of force and the magnitude of R, but you must remember that torque is a vector quantity and we will learn more about it as we move ahead in the following lessons. Another thing I would want you to remember is that this force vector that we take should always be perpendicular to the position vector R. Now you see the force acting here is perpendicular to the position vector. But what if the force is acting at an angle to the position vector r? Then how do we approach torque calculation? So what we do is we split this force into its components. So here is your horizontal component and this one is the vertical component. And what you can see is that this guy or the horizontal component is doing nothing in terms of helping the door to twist. In fact, all it is doing is trying to pull the door in this direction out of its hinge. But then the hinge provides a force that is equal and opposite in direction and that's the reason the door stays in its place. But this force or this component is the one that is helping it to twist or rotate. And as we said earlier, torque is calculated by multiplying the position vector r with that component of the force which is perpendicular to it. So you see, here this force vector is not perpendicular to r as it was in the earlier case here, but this component of the vector is perpendicular to the position vector r so, we will go ahead and calculate torque as a product of R and this component of force that is F sin theta. And very often we call this component of force as a tangential force and this one the radial force. And as we discussed earlier, this component has no role to play while calculating torque. So, we can rewrite this equation as torque is equal to R times Ft where Ft represents the tangential component. Now, if you extend this force line in the reverse direction and often this line is termed as a line of action and then you drop a perpendicular from the axis of rotation 
on this line and let's label it r perpendicular and note that this angle will also be theta in which case sin theta is equal to r perpendicular divided by the hypotenuse which is r or r perpendicular is equal to r sin theta and here if you rearrange the terms like this then we can say that torque is equal to r perpendicular into f so in physics we call this term the moment of arm so these terms that is the line of action or moment of arm are important to remember because when you are doing numericals you will come across these terms quite often and if you have clarity as to how these terms are interpreted it will be a lot easier for you to crack the problems okay so torque can also be written as a product of moment of arm times the applied force f now a couple of important things to remember the first one is the unit of torque is newton meter because when you multiply force with distance you get newton meter but you must also remember that work is also expressed in newton meter but torque and work are very different while work is expressed in joules torque has no special name for it and is usually written as newton meter only and maybe one of you will do some ground breaking work around torque and we'll start measuring it in 10 wjs or 10 johns instead of newton meters So the second thing to remember is that torque is a vector. Now we can clearly see that here either the body can move in clockwise direction or anticlockwise. So what we can do is say that when the body moves clockwise we will assign a negative sign to the torque to give it a vector identity that is torque is equal to minus fr here. And if it moves anticlockwise we will assign a positive sign that is torque is equal to plus fr and you see it is quite the way we do in linear motion where a point can either move to the left and we say the displacement is negative or to the right and we assign a positive sign to give it a vector identity now you can see that quantity r f sin theta is nothing but the magnitude of the vector product r and f and so we can give a more generalized definition of torque as when a force f acts at a point having a position vector r with respect to an origin o the torque of the force with respect to point o is a vector quantity r cross f and being a cross product the direction of this torque is perpendicular to both r and f and given by the right hand rule and i would like to explain the right hand rule with a short video i made earlier and was hugely liked by the students so here it is the cross product between two vectors a and b that are 5 degrees apart is written as a cross b and the result of this operation is a third vector c that equals ab sin phi the resultant vector c is perpendicular to both the vectors a and b now vector perpendicular to a and b could be in this direction or it could be in this direction as well to determine the correct direction this is what you do put your right hand along vector a which is the first vector appearing in a cross b that is the base of the hand aligns with vector a and the palm of your hand faces vector b then you sweep your hand from vector a towards vector b like this then the direction of the thumb is the correct direction of the resultant vector c so that is how you find the direction of the torque vector as well So if you want to understand other lessons around rotation I'd suggest you go through this playlist which is a very good collection of lessons on rotation and if you find this lesson helpful please give it a thumbs up and I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson